Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this message brings to a close our series of reflections on the moral life, which is a section of a longer series on the new evangelization. The reflections on the moral life help us to be a friend of Jesus because what we freely and deliberately choose to do affects our relationships with others, including our relationship with Jesus. As we close this section of reflections, we see God's mercy in the light of our sinfulness. There are two fundamental kinds of sin, original sin and personal or actual sin. Original sin is not a personal act that we do. As an analogy, think of original sin as a lost inheritance. Adam and Eve received original holiness and right relationship with God when they were created, not for themselves only, but for the whole human race. They lost that holiness by their sin and thus lost it for the whole human race. Similar to a person who squanders his fortune and no longer has an inheritance to leave his children. Because of the sin of Adam and Eve, we are born deprived of that right relationship with God, who restores us to his friendship through the grace of baptism. To commit a personal sin, we must know that something is wrong and freely choose to do it anyway. A sin is an offense against God and a violation of God's law. It is a failure in love of God and neighbor and wounds our relationship with God and others. We can sin in our thoughts, words, and deeds, and when we choose not to do something good that we are obliged to do, a sin of omission. Our personal sins differ in gravity and thus are called either mortal or venial sins. Mortal sins destroy our relationship with God and we must repent of them and receive God's forgiveness to be saved from hell. Venial sins do not destroy but weaken our relationship with God. Three conditions are necessary for a sin to be mortal. A grave matter, full knowledge, and deliberate consent. If any of these elements is missing, it is not a mortal sin, but a venial sin. Some examples of actions that are a grave matter are abandoning our faith, becoming involved in the new age, blasphemy, serious lies such as false witness, perjury, and calumny, fraud, stealing a large amount, murder, abortion, physician-assisted suicide, euthanasia, causing serious bodily injury, deliberate drunkenness, drug abuse, terrorism, rape, adultery, fornication, masturbation, contraception, pornography, same-sex acts, prostitution, human trafficking, and deliberately missing Mass on Sunday. We commit a venial sin when the action is less grave, or if it is a grave matter, we do it without full knowledge or complete consent. Yet sin does not have the last word. The Father sent His Son for the salvation of the world. Through His death and resurrection, the gentle rain of God's mercy washes over the face of the human race. To receive God's mercy, we should be truly sorry for our sins and have the desire never to commit them again. The ordinary way to receive God's mercy for mortal sins is the sacraments of baptism and penance. Let us thank God for His mercy that He pours on us in abundance. This is Bishop John Durfler of the Diocese of Marquette.